Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a huge color correction for you guys. My friend Lexi has a crazy band of red. She was all over bright red, probably around a five, six, and she let it fade out. And now it's more brassy and orange with one burgundy band of two inches right in the middle of her hair. So I'm gonna try my best to knock through it and get it to something wearable. Our end goal is within another session or two to get her really, really nice and blonde. And I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and and hope for the best, expect the worst. Always under promise and over deliver. This is looking really bad. I don't think we're gonna get really good results at all. I'm just gonna focus on getting that band out of there and I'm gonna show you guys how to tackle something like this. This is real life. This is what we get in the salon with color corrections all the time. It's never just perfect level sevens that need their roots touched up to get to a perfect 10. It's always complicated more than that 90% of the time. So if you wanna watch this and see what happens and learn a bunch of tips and tricks that I'm gonna do today, then keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, hit post notifications on, and come back every Monday and Friday for more hair educational videos. Let's get into it. And when you thought I was kidding, my golly guys look at this band it is nasty and it's a couple of inches long obviously it's old permanent color i can tell um her all over red faded out most of it was not permanent and what was left behind was more of a brassier copper and that band is just not going anywhere and i know that's the worst place you can get it been through this before it's like the worst spot. If it was a little bit lower where we can chop it, maybe like three inches higher than the ends, or you know, maybe an inch or two lower than the root, but no, this is literally like five or six inches down and it's gonna cause hell. So my goal today is to go in and pack in as many baby light foils as possible. I'm talking back to back to back and get as many in there as possible to try to break this band up. And I'm hoping that I can smudge her and then do a mids toner and kind of mask it a little bit until the next session. But something like this is going to take, you know, three, four sessions till we actually remove that entire band. I've even had people where we had to stop because the band would not budge all the way and their integrity of their hair was not holding up. So definitely this is something you want to watch. So let's get into it. So you guys know I've been loving Joyco Blonde Life lately. I am using 20 volume with Olaplex instead of 30. You're probably wondering why. Um, her hair is already a little bit compromised and I want to be as gentle as possible because I already know this is going to be multiple steps and multiple sessions. There could be a number of different ways to tackle this. You guys are probably asking why I didn't just go in and do, you know, an all over lightener application or just take lightener and put it on the band. I don't work that way. I like foil work. When you do just lightener all over, it's not really gonna get that heat conduction. And it's a lot of time to do every single hair in a foil because you're doing double the amount of foils you would normally do for a tightly packed baby light. So everybody has their way of doing it differently. I could have used a color remover, but it still would have been really strong in there. So in my opinion, the best way to do it is to do baby lights and hope to God it blends as well as possible and pack them in as tight as possible with minimal subsections so it breaks it up as much as possible. How many times am I gonna say possible? <laughs> and smudge it down and do a mids toner and hope to God it looks decent until the next time through. Now, most of the time when I do a color correction, I usually aim for doing a teasy light. That's what I usually like to do. I posted a video of a teasy light a couple of videos back. Teasy lights are great when you want to go in if there's old black dye or whatever the case may be, permanent color, banding, because it's going to give you a decent amount of a lift. Um, you're not going in and doing a million foils because you don't know what you're going to open up. Crazy other bands and so on. So it's always safe to do that and it also gives you a really good look and a nice result and an also great starting point and starting canvas for the next session, which I usually do a tightly packed baby light. With her, the best bet is going in and doing as many foils as possible and packing them in back to back to back 
with minimal subsections. That means a minimum amount of hair left in between each foil. Jumped out of my So if you guys have been following along for some time now here on my YouTube channel and joining my family and community, then you guys know I am all about the detailed hairlines. I don't just do the money piece box in the bang area. I like to bring it all the way around the entire left side and right side. That is the most important spot because that's where all the blondes pull their hair back and that's what they see. So you can have the worst hair job in the back, but as long as those money pieces around the face are on point, that's all your client's going to care about. So I already did those money pieces detailed around the hairline. I think I did all baby lights, back to back, minimal subsections. I mean, literally hairs in between. Um, in this kind of situation, I don't want to go in and just do all slicing and do like four to six slices followed by baby lights and then go back in and gradually work my way back to my normal size because I don't know how she's going to lift. I don't know what other bands are in there. I don't know what's going to happen. So the safest bet is to go in and do multiple back to back baby lights tightly packed around the hairline. I think I did like five or six all the way around and then I started working my way back into my normal sized baby lights. <laughs> Alright guys, so look at all these foils and I went through and I literally painted between all of the dropouts because she had that band as you've seen before. And this is a 6T on the dropouts and I did a low light 6N. This looks dark because it's a cool ash but it's around her natural-ish because she's like a 7 so I did a 6. It's going to fade into the background because all the foils are highlights and lowlights. I told her that so we're going to see what we get. Mask that band and then I'm going to root shadow her because her roots are going to light and really light and then we're going to see if we need to do a mids toner to mask any banding i'm praying that it's coming out then we'll tone her in so possibly a color melt so stay tuned and i'm gonna let her process for 30 40 minutes and then we'll continue all right so lately when somebody needs a root tap shadow or smudge no matter what one i'm doing i've been going with their natural color so i'm mixing 6n 6n a this is what we got guys we have olplex 2 and the finola restructuring mask on our ends and now i'm going to root shadow her we're going to do a mids toner and the ends toner she lifted perfectly at the root um, where she was virgin and then we have that band right about here so that mids toner will help and we're going to keep her as bright as possible and look at that look at all that beautiful blonde around the face and i didn't do any slicing i just did really fine baby lights all around the face Take a look around the hairline and see how tightly packed baby lights still give a really great money piece. Felt so wise, actually was
Look at that money piece, y'all. It looks really dark. I told her it always looks dark when I tone. Stay tuned for the finish. Spin around, babe. It's gonna be gorgeous. Really gorgeous, guys. All right, guys, this is it straight. It's so sad to see all that light blonde at the root go away, but we tried to keep her as bright as we could at the top and around the face. Look at that, so much better. And I did the paint between, and you can see where that band once upon a time was right there, really prominent. It's not there anymore like that kind of gone so today was just knocking through that band getting it out of the way and it really is nice like she said it's better than what it was and that's for sure it was crazy in the beginning see not bad we're gonna just trim our ends to keep it healthy and then we will um weave it real quick and show you guys the after and the ring light so stay tuned all right there you have it i hope you guys enjoyed this color correction tutorial wow I said band be gone and band got lost quick. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Also leave video ideas. I wanna make sure I'm putting out content you guys want to see. I love you all so very much. I'll see you in the next one. As always, so long for now guys.